Welcome to Quick Takes. My name is Michael Antonelli. I'm a market strategist in Barrett's Private Wealth Division. Today's topic is selling stocks based on fear. You're afraid of something. We all get scared from time to time. We all think about selling stocks. I just want to talk through that. Then I want to talk a little bit about how the market works, how the quirks of it. And then I want to talk about what you can do if you feel kind of trapped in that decision. But first, let me preface this by saying, look, it's your money. If you want to sell stocks, you can sell stocks. I just kind of want to talk through it really quickly. I actually wrote a blog post about it last year during COVID and the recession, just to kind of talk people through the process about what I thought were great reasons to sell. You know, in general, there's about three reasons people sell. One is, you know, you've reached a goal. You reached a goal at retirement, college, whatever. You've reached that goal. You sell some stocks. You, you pay for you pay for that. Uh, another is asset allocation change. You you as you kind of age through life, you reduce stocks and add bonds. It's kind of a typical for a life cycle of an investor. But today's topic is the bottom fear. You're afraid of something. So let's kind of get into that. The first question I want to ask you is: Does the market know about your fear? Is what you're thinking about in your head? Does the market know about it? Because if it does. It's been discounting it. That's how the market works. It's kind of discounts all the fears known. National debt, inflation, an election. The market knows about those. It's thinking about those all the time. The stuff that truly, truly hits the market are the stuff it can't see. Think about 9-11, the GFC, COVID. Those are things the market did not see coming. Huge sell-offs. So ask yourself, does the market know my fear? If it does, it's, it's been thinking about it. Think of the trade war. The market knew about the trade war the whole time. If you're going to sell stocks and go to cash because you're afraid and you're thinking about buying them back later, you got to be right twice. And that's going to be really super difficult. It's going to be super, super difficult to be right twice. Also, if you're out of stocks, you're in cash, you're getting no more dividends. You're getting no more compounding. So that that goal you want to reach, the reason you're investing, you're not getting dividends and compounding anymore. Charlie Munger said, never interrupt compounding unnecessarily. Now, admittedly, I got lucky on this, but in March of last year, 2020, when the, when the market was really selling off, I had a dividend reinvest near the low. You're not getting that. You're not getting dividends anymore being in cash. Remember that. And ultimately, you can't ever get rid of risk. You can only transfer it to something else. If you say to yourself, I'm out of equities, I'm going to be in cash, you've transferred the risk now to inflation and, and outliving your money. You can't eliminate risk. You can only transfer it to something else. Let's talk about how the market works really quickly, how quirky it is. Look at the top over here. Look at the top. The best day in market's history, the S&P 500's history. It happened only a couple days after one of the worst days in 2008. The best days clustered near the worst days. So if you're selling because you're scared the market's going down, you're more than likely going to miss the best days. And we know missing the best days really does tend to impact your returns dramatically. I mean, missing the worst days would also help your returns, but they cluster near each other. It's really, really super hard to do this. I want you to think of this volatility, this crazy stock market movement as the price of admission to your equities. Everything has a price. Everything. Your price for those equity-like returns and reaching your goals is volatility. You have to pay that price. We all do in our fear and unease. That's the price for equities returns. Now, let's say, you know, I didn't convince you and and you're still thinking, oh my gosh, I want to get out of this. I want to go to cash. Uh, Let's talk through what might happen. So let's say you go to all cash and the market keeps going down. Uh, you're more than likely going to sell more. You're certainly not going to go back to the stock market. You'll be in cash probably for a while. Your fear will have been realized. Let's say the stock market goes up and you're like, oh, I made a mistake. I, I'm out of stocks. They're going up. What do I do? The way to get back in on both sides is to use what's called evidence-based triggers. I want you to use evidence-based triggers. On the downside, if the market falls 10%. I buy a little back. 20%, I buy a little back. After all, you can't buy low, sell high if you're not buying low. And on the upside... If the market, say, stays above the 200-day moving average or the 10-month moving average, that means that the trend is intact and you're going to buy a little bit back at the end of each month. Those are evidence-based triggers. They're not gut-based triggers. Evidence-based. That's super, super important. Remember, we're, we're all worried about stocks. There's no perfect world where politics and the world and the market, everything's really super, super peaceful and we're, we're just kind of reaping 20% returns. That's just not how the world works. You have to know that the world's a crazy place, but in order to benefit in the long run growth of the economy and the stock market, you need to stay in stock, stay on your plan, and let compounding do its work. So thanks so much for coming, and and I hope to see you soon.